Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you some very interesting things you can do with Arturia's new pigment synth uh, in the world of generative music. This is this is an area which I don't think has been touched on very much um, in all the in all the coverage of pigments. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to Loopop, who I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, whose recent video on generative music spurred me into making this one. So we'll start with a fairly basic sound here in Pigments. Uh, it's using the wavetable engine, it sounds a bit like this. It's very basic as you can see, nice, fairly complex wave, wave fold, waveform here, just scanning slowly through the wavetable just to give it a bit of movement. Taking some of the harsher frequencies off with the top end with this, um, with this filter. I'm really into 12 dB filters at the moment, not sure why, but it sounds nice. And then we've got a little bit of wave folding just to give it a bit of character, a bit of chorus for some more movement, and then some good old delay and reverb here. And what we're going to start looking at, or where, where we're going to find all the tools we need to make generative music, is here down in the random section. Uh, of the modulation sources. We've got some LFOs, we've got some functions which essentially sort of a bit like uh, custom LFO shapes, they're very cool but all the really fun stuff is here in the random tab and we'll have a look at the combinate tab uh, as well. Combinate, combinate, we'll have a look at the combinate tab as well. So we've got three sources of randomness to play with. Um, if from right to left, sort of in order of complexity. First off, we've got a binary source, which at, uh, in this case, every eighth note, it essentially flips a coin and goes from either one and zero, uh, based on the probability here. So you can turn it all the way down and you get lots of zeros and only the occasional one. And then you can turn it up the other way and get lots of ones and very few zeros, depending on what you need. Just put it back to its default. Moving on, we've got good old sample and hold, which again may be familiar to a lot of you. It's This is just kicking out a big stream of random values and it's quite nice this one. Uh, I like this one because you can sort of smooth it out. You can smooth out the changes so it's a bit less sudden. Uh, and again, you can set the rate. I've got it set to eighth notes, same as the binary for the moment. But then the last one here, the Turing module, this is where we, this is where the fun really starts with generative music, because this is a way of um, essentially doing controlled randomness. It's it's all the randomness of the sample and hold, but you can you can shape it, you can bend it to your will, uh, which is really key in generative music. And probably the best way, if you're not familiar with how this module works, um, of the sort of the concept of a Turing machine, uh, the best best way to be for me to explain it really is for you to hear it. So let's take our Turing machine as the modulation source and we're going to route it to the coarse tuning of engine one. Um, probably about that much is good and let's play a note. Just hold that down and you can hear that it's just randomly modulating the pitch up and down all over the place all sorts of all sorts of stuff coming out and what we can do is we've got this length parameter which I've got set to eight steps and if we hear something we like what we can do is we turn the flip to zero you can hear it's locked that sequence of eight values and it's just going to cycle through that all the way and if you turn it away from zero and closer to 50%, it gets more and more random. 50% is fully random. And then if you take it up to 100, all the way to 100%, it's going to flip it, flip the sequence every time it loops. And it's this, this control of this flip parameter is what's going to make us some cool generative music. So let's, let's put it back to fully random for now and turn it off before I go mad. Um, so that's how we can control our random numbers, but to make, it, um, to make it more melodic, more listenable to, we need to control the pitches that it's kicking out. Um, just listening to random pitches is, is going to get very wearing very fast. But we've got this Q button here on the course tuning and that means we can quantize the 
the modulation values that are coming in to this coarse tuning. So if I turn it on again, you can hear that it's now locked everything, in this case, to the major scale. If you're on this edit button, you can edit all the scale degrees of what you want to hear. So now we've got random major scale in the key of C, which is, which is very nice. And you can turn these on so we can say, let's have a bit more of a minor flavor. sounding very nice but for this uh, just to keep it simple we're going to stick to minor pentatonic here and this is this is all very nice this is, this is very pleasant to listen to but it's not truly generative music because we're still having to we hear something we like, just flip that on and then turn it off again. And it would be really nice if we could let the let the machine do a bit more of this and let the machine evolve the sequence as it goes. And that's where our binary comes in because we can automate this flip parameter. So let's take our binary source and tell it to uh, modulate the flip parameter between 0 and 50%. So whenever the binary goes to 1, we're getting random, and when it goes back to 0, it's locking that sequence. And again, what we can do, and this is where the, this is where the, probability, um, the probability comes in, because we can turn that down and slow down the rate that it evolves at. Oops, not like that. I'm still in modulation mode. Let's turn that down. So it'll just slowly feed in more randomness. Let's take the, let's take the, uh, the depth of the flip as well. sequence is evolving really nicely with no hands, no input from me. And this is this is sounding really nice. But it's still sounding a bit like it's just sort of jumping from note to note, up and down, up and down. So it would be nice to sort of put a bit of articulation on this. And this is where another cool feature of pigments comes in. If we go to our envelopes, we take envelope 2, we can see that we've got lots of different gate sources for it. And we can actually set envelope 2 to be gated at the same rate as the Turing ma machine is changing value. So if we now take our envelope 2 and set it to the cutoff, now Every time the, the Turing machine value changes, it kicks off that envelope and gives it just a little bit, gives it that pluck to it. And that sounds a lot nicer. I'll just take that down a little bit. It's a little bit extreme for my taste. And we can introduce some genuine randomness. Say, uh, again, let's take, let's do the cutoff again. We can say take the sample and hold, and then we can modulate our cutoff with that. This is genuine randomness now. So the sample and hold is now controlling the accent on each note.
and that, with with no human input at all, is sounding really, really nice. This is this is something that, in another synth, you you'd either have to sort of dive into Reactor or dive into Max for Live to do it, or you'd have to go into the world of Modular. But this is just I just did that with a few clicks. But it's about to get cooler because we have a second synth engine that we haven't used yet. The sequence is very nice, but we can accompany it with something else. So I've already set up a few values here, just using the analog engine, just for a change. Take the volume down, because it'll probably be a bit loud when I turn it on. There we go. So at the moment, this is just generating a fixed note. But what we can, what we could do, is modulate this from the Turing machine again. But the Turing machine is the same for both synth engines. So we're going to get the same notes if we set it up in the same way. But let's, let's set it up anyway. Oh, and let's turn the quantize on. And we can set it now to different notes. So set it to sound like a bass and it's only just jumping between different octaves of the root note. Let's put a filter on that just to make it a bit more interesting. And this is really nice because it's linked in because it's because it's coming from the same Turing sequence, the bass pattern will change at the same time as the higher pattern will change, but in, in different ways because it's locked to different notes. And we can throw in, say, uh, the fifth here. Another flavour. parts. Maybe we want some higher counter melody, for example. Um, but as I said, we can't really do that because we're dealing with the same stream of notes. Uh, but this is where the Combinate tab comes in, because we can take our existing random Turing stores and do something else with it to make a related modulation source, but one that's very slightly different, just to change it round. So for that, let's go to LFO and take LFO2 and set that to square. And let's set the rate to uh, eighth notes, so the same as Turing. And now, if we take our source to be the Turing machine, modulate it by LFO2, you can see we've now, we're now doing something different. So let's take off, let's go to our Turing and take that off our second engine and instead modulate the second engine by our combined thing here. Oops, there we go, that's better, that's a better range for it. got this, at that high LFO rate, we've got this really cool Terry Riley kind of pattern going on over the top. Take that up again. We can turn it down. Turn the mix down a bit so we can hear the initial sequence. If we just change these subtle things, we can make it and just completely change the character of what we're doing. And of course, you can modulate all this, all these things that I'm tweaking here in front of you, you can modulate. I think I like this one. Let's, let's explore a bit more. Let's take 
our source is combination one here. And mix it with a sample and hold. Days. I'm sure you probably could too. <sighs> I hope you've enjoyed it, listening to this, and I hope you've learned something. And if you've got any questions about anything, um, please put them in the comments below. If I work out how to extract the patch, the sort of the patch set, the setup from this, so you can import it into your own setups, uh, then I will put a link in the description so you can download it and have a play. Look forward to seeing what you do with it. Thank you.